Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret planned contrasts that follow up on a two-way ANOVA. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. In a previous video, I covered two-way ANOVA. If you haven't watched that video, I strongly suggest watching it because we'll be talking about the GLM or General Linear Model Command in order to do the post hoc follow-up analyses that are useful in unpacking what actually happened in that two-way ANOVA. If you're familiar with GLM, then feel free to continue watching. I'll recreate most of an analysis that I ran previously, and then we'll do those follow-up analyses to see how we can really dig in. So in particular, I'm going to see how two variables, gender and citizenship, interact with one another to predict another variable called importance views. So let me expand this so you can see, importance views. This is a variable that indicates how important it is to somebody how many views a video has before they actually watch it. In the previous video, I actually only allowed for two levels of gender, male and female, but here I'm gonna let all the data stand. So we'll have male, female, and other coded as one, two, and three. And so we'll actually have a three gender by two, which is citizen, yes or no, ANOVA predicting this continuous variable importance views. To conduct this analysis, we'll go up to analyze, general in your model, univariate, We'll put the variable importance views into our dependent variable list. We'll scroll down and include gender and citizenship as our fixed factors. Under plots, I'm going to ask for the gender by citizenship plot as a bar chart with error bars. And under EM means, I'm going to make sure I move everything over and include it. If I did all that quickly, again, I recommend watching that previous video where I go through this a lot more slowly and explain why I'm choosing all these options. Now, I'm not actually going to run this analysis. Instead, I'm gonna hit paste because we need the syntax that was used to generate these analyses because we need to update the syntax to create those contrasts. So I'm gonna hit paste. That populates all of our code into the syntax editor. And the first thing I need to do is rename this command from a unionova to GLM or general linear model. That gives me a lot more flexibility in what I wanna do. I'm actually then gonna go ahead and run this code so we can see what the output looks like without our comparisons. I'll hit the run button. And here we see that first of all, there is that same two-way interaction that we saw before. Gender by citizenship has a significant two-way interaction. We know that because that value is below our convention of 0.05. And I'm gonna skip over a few of these things and just go to the graph. In the graph here, we can see where those differences appear to be. So for instance, it doesn't appear like there's a big difference between whether you're a citizen or not, the blue and red bars, when you're male, there's actually no data for non-citizens who say other as their gender because there are actually only a few responses for that, so really no comparison to be made here. But all the action of this interaction seems to be happening within female respondents. It seems like female respondents who are not citizens think that how many views a video has is an important consideration for deciding whether to watch a video, at least more so than females who are in fact citizens. But we can't know that for sure without actually running the statistical test to compare these two. Well, the easiest way to do that is with the compare command within the script that we use for GLM. So I'll go back to my script, and right here we have this line EM means. This is our estimated marginal means for the full interaction. If we go back to our output, we see that this is the table right here. These are the marginal means, meaning the means for each of these bars right here. Those are just represented in this space. Note, by the way, that this value is missing because there is no data to populate that particular cell. And so what I wanna be able to do is compare each of these pairwise means right here. And I want to do it all within the framework of this ANOVA. And so to do that, we need to modify this table, basically modify EM means to make that comparison. And we can do that again in our script right here. We have to add an additional command called compare. And in particular, I want to compare citizenship. So I'm going to type in citizen in parentheticals around compare. What that's going to do is actually conduct each of those pairwise comparison at every level of gender. Let's see what that output looks like. I'm going to hit go. And I'll scroll down to the relevant section, which is titled number four over here. Here are my pairwise comparisons. This is saying, at the level male, compare non-citizens to citizens. The mean difference there is tiny, it's 0.066, and we see that right here, here are the means. And we see that that is not a significant difference. For females, no versus yes, the mean difference is 0.709. And in fact, that is a statistically significant difference. And for other, well, we can't make that comparison because we don't have any data in the no cell here. We actually see the specific F test for those contrasts right here as well down below. So here are my univariate contrasts. For males, yes versus no, we see the F value is tiny and not significant. 
For females, the F value is huge, and it is significant, and again, no test for other. So this is our quick and easy way to make this comparison, and it's worth pointing out that you can make the comparison the other way too. So if we look at our chart, we could also say, for people who are non-citizens, can we do all those pairwise comparisons? So basically, can we compare this blue bar to this blue bar, then this red bar to this red bar, this red bar to this one, and then this one to this one, every pairwise comparison within the level of citizenship. And all we have to do if we go back to our code is change and say compare gender. So in other words, we're gonna be comparing the level of gender within each level of citizenship. Let's just run that and see what it looks like as well. If we scroll down, we now have those comparisons in a slightly different way. It's now saying when you're not a citizen, male versus female, is that a significant difference? Well, no, not really. Male versus other, no data for there, so we can't actually do that analysis. Female versus male, it's actually just the same analysis as we saw before, and so on. The thing I will caution you is that when you're doing this, and if you don't have an a priori hypothesis to test, you are in fact just fishing, meaning you're running multiple comparisons and seeing if anything comes back as statistically significant, which greatly inflates your type 1 error or your false positive rate. And you might want to think about doing something like a Bonferroni correction here. And in fact, you can do that right within SPSS. If we go back to our syntax, there's a command you can say, which is adjust, ADJ, and we could adjust it using the Bonferroni correction for multiple comparisons. And so the syntax is just here. If we now click run, these comparisons and these corresponding p-values are in fact corrected for multiple comparisons. You can see that in the little superscript D. It says right here, adjustment for multiple comparisons, Bonferroni. So you can feel a little bit more confident about these results because they are in fact taking into account the fact that you were just kind of in a fishing expedition here. So this is the point in the video where I ask you to pause and try this yourself. In particular, what I'd like you to do is use the two variables minute watched, which is right up here. That's a categorical variable that indicates how many minutes an individual watched YouTube on any given day in a variety of bucket response options, ranging from zero minutes all the way to more than 180. Interact that with the level of education, which is right down here. And so you see education also a categorical variable, less than high school, high school, and so on. There's seven levels there. Predicting average opinion and critically run the comparison after the fact, looking to see if education differed within each level of minute watched. And just to make this a little bit more robust, let's add a Bonferroni correction. I'll put up on the screen everything that I just said, but this is the moment that you need to pause the video, give it a try, and when you return, I'll show you how I do it as well. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to do that, and so I will as well. I always like to start by just recreating my ANOVA because I don't remember all the syntax off the top of my head. This does it for me. Analyze, general in your model, univariate. As I said, we're going to include minute watched and education as our two between subject variables in our fixed factors. We're gonna predict average opinion, which is right here. I'm gonna include the plot for minute watched by education with bars and error bars. I find that to be useful. And under EM means, I'm gonna move everything over. And again, rather than running this, I'm gonna go ahead and click paste. And so here's my code. Critically, I'm gonna change this union over just like we do above to GLM. And under EM means, I'm going to say compare eduke, which is my code for education. And I'm going to make the Bonferroni adjustment for multiple comparisons by typing adjust and Bonferroni. And that's it. That's actually all I need to do. And if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that my output is pretty complex. So you'll see, first of all, that there isn't a two-way interaction, but that's fine. We're doing this as an example to see if we can learn how to do this particular tool. So if we scroll down, we see that here are our estimated marginal means for every single level of minute watch and education predicting average opinion. And critically, here are all of our pairwise comparisons. You'll see a lot of missing values because we just happen to have missing data in a lot of these places. But where we do have comparisons that are available, like high school graduate within zero minutes of watch time, you see the results are what they are. In almost all of these cases, I believe the results are not statistically significant, and that's not surprising given that we didn't see that interaction to begin with. But if this is what you were interested in, this would be the way to do that. And again, if we just scroll down all the way to the bottom, you have a nice visual representation of what those differences look like. Honestly, it kind of just looks like a mess here, and that's okay. These are real data, that's what happens. So if you wanna make these simple pairwise comparisons, these post hoc contrasts, this is a simple and quick way to do that using the compare syntax. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below, and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, 
intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.